Hi everybody. Welcome to our video on the statement of cash flows. And in this video, we are going to be looking at an entire uh, statement of cash flows at one time. So here is our information. And if you'll notice, we're, we're given an entire income statement, although small. It is an income statement. And we are given a balance sheet. Now, typically, this is the way you would be provided information when doing a statement of cash flows. So in this example, we are given our two financial statements, but we're also given some additional information in letters A and B. And we're told there was an acquisition of equipment and the business sold no equipment during the year. So we bought some equipment, but we didn't sell any. So that will help us when we're looking at the T account for that um, for those long term assets. Specifically, if you see our balance sheet there, we're talking about equipment. In letter B, we had a payment of a long term note payable. And during the year, the business issued a $5,100 note payable. Now, when you issue a note payable, that means you're writing someone an IOU, basically. That means you're getting the cash, and you're going to owe it in the future. And our objective here is to produce a statement of cash flows using the indirect method for the year ended December 31st. So what I'd like for you to do, since you've had experience through the last several videos that we've, we've looked through producing pieces of a statement of cash flows. I would like for you to take this information, pause the video, do as much of the statement of cash flows as you can. Once you feel like you've got as much as you can do, come back and we'll take a look at the entire statement together. Okay, so hopefully you gave this a good college try. And um, hopefully we've got a lot of it correct, if not all of it correct. So here I'm showing you the first section of the statement of cash flows, which is the operating activity section. Now remember, under the indirect method, we always start with net income. And we find that on the income statement. So in net income was $19,000. And we're going to adjust net income, which was calculated based on the accrual basis of accounting meaning revenues were recorded when they were earned, not necessarily when cash was received, and expenses was recorded when they were incurred, not necessarily when they were paid. So in the operating activities section, we want to adjust net income from accrual to cash basis. So in the operating activities section, we're going to analyze current assets, current liabilities, depreciation, and gains and losses. Well, we, def we find depreciation and gains and losses on the income statement. And since we start with net income, I like to get depreciation and the gains and losses out of the way. So looking at the income statement, we don't see any gains or losses, but we do see depreciation expense. Now remember, depreciation expense is a non-cash expense. So it reduced net income, but it didn't reduce cash. So in the statement of cash flows, since it reduced net income but did not reduce cash, we would add depreciation back. So it's a positive number on the operating activities section. So since we have no gains or losses, we're done with the income statement. We can move on to the balance sheet. So we're going to analyze current assets and current liabilities. Well, we don't ever analyze cash because that, that's kind of a check figure at the bottom of the statement of cash flows, which we'll see here in just a little bit. So the only current asset that we have is accounts receivable. And we notice that accounts receivable went from 8100 to 10100 So accounts receivable increased by $2,000. Well, why would accounts receivable increase? Well, it means that we made sales, which would make income go up but we didn't get cash for them yet. So we haven't been paid for those sales. So it made net income go up, but not cash. So an increase in accounts receivable will make the operating activity section go down because it did not affect cash, but it increased net income. Okay, so we need to take that out of the operating activity section. So we're done with current assets because that's the only one we have. And we have one current liability, accounts payable. And it went from 4,500 to 6,500. So it also increased. Why would accounts payable increase? Well, for example, maybe we got a utility bill. We get a utility bill and we expense it when we, when we get it. So it decreases net income, but we may wait a couple weeks or a month to pay it. 
So it hasn't affected cash yet because accounts payable increased. So therefore, we need to add that back because it decreased net income but did not decrease cash. And therefore, we finished the operating activity section. So the total adjustments, when you sum those up, is an addition of $6,000 to the $19,000 in net income, giving us a positive amount of $25,000, and we call that net cash provided by operating. Now remember, if it's a negative number, it would be net cash used by, um, but when it's positive, it's net cash provided by whatever the section is. In this case, it's the operating activity section. All right, let's move to the uh, cash flows from the investing activities section. So remember, we want these three sections to be in order. So operating, investing, and financing. And the second one is the investing activity section where we analyze long-term assets. Well, we only have one long-term asset, equipment net. Now remember, when you see that word net, that means something has been taken out. In this case, depreciation is also included in that account. So it's net of depreciation. So this account started at $68,000 and ended up at $76,000. And you see I have denoted that in my T account. We started with 68, we ended with 76. In the story, it says that we have acquired equipment, but no equipment was sold during the year, so that we know there was no sales of equipment. But we do know, since this is equipment net, it includes depreciation, and depreciation was $6,000. We see that on the income statement, so we'll put that in our T account. And when we solve for the unknown, which is the amount of equipment acquired, we find that to be $14,000. So that's what goes in our statement of cash flows under the investing activities section. Now, when we acquire equipment, that's a decrease in cash. So we would have a decrease of $14,000 in the investing activities section. So notice now the amount is negative in the investing activities section. So we, we call that net cash used by investing activities $14,000. Now let's look at the third section of the statement of cash flows, and that is the cash flows from financing activities. And this is where we analyze all of our long-term liabilities and our owner's equity accounts. So in this one, I'm going to start with the payment of dividends. So remember, this is going to come from your retained earnings. So it says that we started retained earnings with $47,800, and we ended with $50,700. So you can see I put that in my, uh, my retained earnings T account here. We also know that net income from the income statement makes retained earnings go up. So we're going to add that to retained earnings with a credit because retained earnings carries a normal credit balance. And we find that beginning plus net income does not equal ending. So we must have reduced retained earnings in some way, and that's by paying out dividends. So when we solve for that unknown, we find dividends to be $16,100. And when we pay dividends, that's a reduction of cash. The next line on here is um, notes payable. So if we go up into our um, balance sheet, we find we have one long-term liability, um, and that's long-term notes payable. And they went from $10,000 to $7,000, which is a reduction of $3,000. But if you remember from part B in the story, there was a payment of a long-term note payable, and during the year, the business issued another $5,100 in notes payable. So if we look at the T account for notes payable, this is going to help us see this whole story. So we started with a beginning balance in notes payable of $10,000, and it says we ended with $7,000. And the story says that we issued, in other words, increased, our notes payable by $5,100 during the year. Well, when we take all of our debits, $15,100, and subtract our ending of $7,000, we end with that we must have paid or reduced our notes payable by $8,100. So we have a payment of note payable that reduces cash of $8,100. But don't forget about the fact that we increased our notes payable by $5,100 as well. 
So you could actually combine these two into one line item if you um, wanted to. Um, a payment of note payable of $3,100 in total is how much you are paying on towards your notes payable account. But it's also perfectly fine to have these as separate line items. Just don't forget this one uh, when you record the payment. Don't forget the, the fact that you also borrowed more money as well. And the last item is owner's equity. So we have common stock. Common stock went from $18,000 to $27,000. Therefore, we had a, an, a cash receipt from the issuance of stock of $9,000. So our net cash used, so again, it's negative, in the financing activity section of $10,100. The final thing we need to do is sum up our three sections. So we had cash flows from operating of 25,000, we had cash used by investing of 14,000, and net cash used in financing of 10,100 for a total net increase in cash of $900. Now remember earlier I said that cash, we don't analyze cash on the statement of cash flows because it's kind of like a check figure at the end of our statement of cash flows. Notice if we take the change in our cash of 900, add it to our beginning cash balance of 4200, that equals our ending cash balance of 5100. So the cash line on the statement of cash flows is a lot like a check figure. The difference in beginning and ending should be the net change in cash on our statement of cash flows.